Hello, fellow listeners. Uh, good afternoon. Hello, wherever you are at this moment. Once again, we are very happy uh, to have another STEM talk this afternoon. Our guest is Miss Beth Henning. So we will be asking her some questions about uh, the many things she is doing and STEM, which is uh, the acronym that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Hello, Beth. Good Hello. afternoon, and welcome to Gizo STEM Network. So mm -hmm. how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. So you are doing great. It is awesome to have you. So I do know that you are a great STEM proponent, and our talk today is going on to focus around science, technology, and mathematics. So one of my favorite today, subjects. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry again. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's my favorite subject. Your favorite subject? Yes. Is that what you said? I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm sorry I didn't hear you very well. So anyhow, I have uh, the first question for you. Is that okay if I call you by Beth or Miss Henning? <laughs> that is fine. Okay. Okay, Beth. Welcome on to Gizo STEM Network. It is a great pleasure to speak out with you today. So you and I share a great passion for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. What does our STEM mean to you and your STEM story? So in I think maybe back in middle school when um, I took woodshop and home ec, that's probably where I started to get a little bit interested. Um, Woodshop is not exactly STEM, but back in those days, um, drawing wooden blocks and uh, the shapes um, sort of got me started and interested. And in home economics, the project-based learning aspect of it was very valuable to me. Um, in high school, I took um, computer programming, which at that point, um, dating myself a little bit, uh, was data processing um, the punch cards. Uh, and so, uh, I didn't really think that was such a great idea or that that would pick off at all. <laughs> so um, not a lot of direction out of high school. My family wasn't uh, well off. So I joined the Air Force. And 10 years later, I discovered that there was this thing called engineering. So I decided to get an electrical engineering degree. And that went very well. I was able to um, have a career um, with civil service and worked for Air Force Research Lab in, in my internship and a little bit of time with the F-16 program, my group uh, military sales, which was um, awesome, a great job. Um, my husband is military or was military at the time though, so we got orders and we moved. Um, fast forwarding, um, I ended up here in Niceville, Florida, and yes, it is very nice, and um, got interested in STEM education. Uh, there are um, lots of opportunities here for learning robotics and doing training and, and I was asked, asked to help um, start a STEM education program for a new startup called Doodle Institute and uh, I enjoyed that very much but then fast forwarding again um, I did some special projects for them um, but then it was time to start my own business so now I'm an entrepreneur and I um, own STEMworks along with my husband. Perfect. That is uh, so good. So I was uh, wondering, uh, Beth, uh, do you have any earpiece by any chance? It appears that there is this uh, feedback loop coming like an echo. I was uh, wondering, are you listening uh, directly to your uh, speakers uh, to some extent? Let me put it in my headphones. That will probably help. So that may help a little bit. So this is a little part of our technical situation when it comes down to How's that? using our technology. <laughs> Perfect. Is that better? Thank you so much. So 
you briefly mentioned STEM Works, so which is basically an educational program that you created to mm -hmm. promote, to stimulate interest in STEM. Could you please tell us more about it and how fellow STEMers can get in touch with you? Sure. Um, so when I worked for Doolittle Institute, I started um, a, um, a regional area for First Lego League Robotics and uh, fell in love with it. it. It actually changed my life. It's just as much as some of the kids. And so um, when it was time to venture out on my own, um, I really wanted to do something for uh, students in areas that couldn't get to STEM education. Uh, maybe they, um, their schools didn't provide it. Uh, maybe there weren't any after-school activities that they could get involved in. And so I'm still in the process of working with that. There's some agencies um, in rural Northwest Florida that I've formed relationships. Uh, but the uh, STEM Works itself uh, mostly does STEM education events um, out of our mobile lab, basically. So um, we bring STEM to students. Um, one of our biggest activities of the year, uh, we just finished up um, in January at Daytona International Speedway, and we brought uh, our aerodynamics activity to the scouts. So there's a program called Scout Days at the racetrack, and we brought um, aerodynamics. We talked about wind tunnel testing and how that's important for racing. Uh, we also talked about 3D printing and how they do prototyping um, on scale models, but then also now they're 3D printing actual parts for, for race cars. So um, it's very important to understand how the mathematics, all the curves of the body of the race cars um, contribute to downforce and drag in order to figure out the aerodynamic efficiency of those cars. Um, and we also brought a couple of other interesting activities, including our robotic kitten build uh, to the a special session with the Girl Scouts. That is so awesome. So your work is amazing. So I hope for those summers listening out there, uh, those who are interested in uh, becoming a summer, and I believe that your program is so awesome. So, and I truly believe uh, what we are doing with the wind tunnel, so which is basically a horizontal wind tunnel. So I have done a similar work with a vertical wind tunnel mm. as far as in skydiving is concerned, which is pretty good stuff. So talking about uh, terminal velocity, uh, drag, force, gravity, and so on, which is pretty cool stuff. So. The moment that we do this kind of things, it is so much fun. We are doing those things every day, but unfortunately, um, many do not realize the applications of our STEM in our daily life. So, the next question I have for you, Beth, is the fact that when it comes down to stereotypes, and they are everywhere. What are some stereotypes about STEM and how we can challenge them? Mm, that's a really good question. I think that in some areas, um, some of the stereotypes are just being dissolved, and that's great. Not in all areas, you know, absolutely. Um, but in, I think we're making a lot of progress. Um, the government is putting forth a lot of funding towards STEM activities. And a lot of people are doing a lot of things very similar to what I'm doing and just going out there. And in many cases, I just volunteer. Um, uh, but the typical stereotype to think of with STEM would be um, the male uh, with maybe glasses uh, that can't talk in front of a crowd. And that's just not the case in a lot of areas now. More girls are getting involved in STEM education. Um, our robotics teams, they were at 30%, and the percentage is gaining every year um, because um, girls are just really enjoying the project-based learning, the problem solving, the critical thinking um, that's involved with uh, robotics and um, some of our other activities that uh, the science, um, girls are really getting into science fair now. And uh, in a lot of cases, they're actually outperforming boys 
um, especially uh, at the middle school level. Wow. So I hope everyone is listening and everyone is taking note. <laughs> so, as you know, when we talk about STEM, it is always in terms of the students. So, how can we stimulate the interest of our STEM fields so that our students and parents explore the possibilities of STEM on what they do every day? I think getting the word out and showing them how much they can learn, how much it can benefit them, and how fun it is. Um, because uh, a lot of people, um, especially several, several years ago, um, said, you know, I don't know anything about this robot robotics program you have in Northwest Florida. I've never heard of it. And now it's, we're getting the word out. It's becoming more prevalent. Um, I'm involved as a volunteer now, and I just I love it. Uh, the students are learning leadership. They're learning teamwork. Um, they're obviously learning to control robots and build robots. They're learning about servos and sensors. And um, the, when you make it simple enough and give students the resources and um, help them find the answers for themselves, then they enjoy it so much more. Um, and especially when you give them ownership. Uh, if you are the type of teacher that um, will pull the project out of the hands of the student, then you probably don't belong in STEM. What you want to do is you want to be the type of teacher who asks them questions. You give them their initial training, the foundational training. Uh, you make sure that they have the resources they need, and then you step back and you ask them questions. That's the best way for students to learn. Thank you for the answer, and thank you for this good elaboration on uh, such question. So, when we talk about STEM, so oftentimes it is referred to formal learning. So we go to an institution, we take a specific subject, we study, we learn about it over the years. So what is your thought process or processes uh, when it comes down to STEM and formal learning? So um, again, just sort of stemming off my last answer, um, making sure they have the resources, asking them questions. But um, one thing that I've used with um, the over 50 interns that I've mentored, both formal and informal, over the last, um, I guess it's been eight years, um, I have them blog. When they create a blog every week, there's a format. They talk about the problems that they're running. Well, first of all, they start with their goals. Uh, then they talk about problems that they've run into and uh, options that they've used to solve those problems, and then what the final solution was. And this way, they're keeping a record for themselves of uh, what the solution was, because I don't know about you, but sometimes I find a solution and a month later I'm trying to remember what it was. You know, was it a, um, a, a link um, to a special software or was it um, a different way of a different process? And um, by blogging, they also have a portfolio for future employers or college applications. Um, I have them insert a picture, whether it's a screen print or a picture of the project itself. Um, and it's really been a great method um, for them to um, systematically record their project and what they've learned. Awesome. Thank you so much. So now it comes down to our last question for the day, for now. So I hope that uh, you and I have a many, many STEM talk in the future. Sure. So to talk about the many things that we are passionate about, the many things that we do, because STEM fields are very important for the sustainability of the future. So you have been doing this over the years, and I have been doing this as well. Based on your experience, what is your message to fellow STEMers? watching and listening today? 
I'd say the first thing is make yourself an expert in something. Pick something that you love to do, um, whether it's computer programming or robotics or 3D printing, and go out and research and find out how can I do this better. Go through the tutorials and make sure that you are going through them um, completely. Don't skip around. Just go through them all, learn them all. And what happens when you make yourself an expert is people come to you and they want to, they, they know that you have the answer or at least you know where to find the 